make it happen right here. DDE versus White Ra. Now, DDE did execute a very, very nice push, I have to say. Mm -hmm. But that defense by White Ra was absolutely stellar. Yeah. You I can't mean, take that away. He, he took too many hits from these DTs. The timing was fine. The turret was up fine. He just took too much hits. He shouldn't have done or accepted that much damage from White Ra which meant his push would have been stronger. It would have been harder, more units there, but he lost so much money uh, and units defending against those DTs that it made the push very, very weak, which, mean, which means White Raw really did roll over it. Needs to uh, be a little bit better with his DT defense. Yep. And, of course... Better defend against those zealot drops on top of your tanks. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I know. I Especially when that. there's like stim marines it. in the army as well. It's like, how did that even get in? Well, to be fair, he wasn't expecting it. It's as simple as that. And you can hardly blame him. That is not a very commonly seen tactic. I know. It's like meant to be used against pure mech. But White was like, this is my only way to defend this. Yeah, pretty much. He did it, it quite was. nicely. I actually expected the Immortal to go directly on top of the tanks. But his positioning with the Immortal was a bit better. He put it off slightly to the flank, which allowed it to get in a few free hits before <laughs> DDE was able to focus fire it. If it went right down the middle of the tanks, it would have been immediately focused down. So he took a tank as a result of that. White Ross also, also, I imagine, going to really, really love the buff to the range of Immortals that is coming in the next patch. Whatever the case, I bring you DDE. He is in the Red Trunks. He is playing at Terran to the north of this particular map, which is the Shattered Temple, versus his opponent in the long position. It's the one and only White Ra. He is in the Yellow Trunks, playing Protoss to the south. And uh, once again, White Ra is going to go for that 13 gateway here, and uh, triple Chrono Boost as well, which he'll be looking to do, most likely. Um, and the thing is with White Ra, he's a very, very very intelligent player, but he's he's like water because he will mold into whoever he's playing against, uh, and that's one of his kind of traits to be honest. Because he is so good at doing that, he will react and he'll kind of weigh up the situation as the series goes on. He's like, well, if you like to do this, I know this is better against it, or this is your weakness, or this is your kind of building up weakness, like the DTs and so on. Uh, really looking to exploit problems with another player's game, and that's why White Rot is so flexible. Uh, and such a good overall solid Protoss player. Oh yes, no real doubt about that one. Simulator coming down for him, immediately throwing some probes into it. Mining of the gas is occurring, folks, right now, at this very moment. In the meantime, very, very late on the gas right here for DDE. Looking perhaps for a gasless expand. Yeah, definitely looking for a gasless expand here. And this can be exploited by White Rod, though he has just now used that third Corona boost. Uh, and, I mean, what he can do against it, he can be very, very aggressive with st Stalkers early on. He can Chrono Boost Stalkers out if he wants to, as this Cybernet's core completes. Uh, or he can just play defensive, play a little bit more passive, uh, and go for a bit of a fast expand here. He may even skip the Zealot, which he is, actually, um, to get the, the expansion up that little 100 minerals faster than usual, which is going to happen now. Yes, indeed. Here comes the Command Center right here from uh, DDE. Of course, just a tad bit risky to do it, because you never know what White Rod is going to do. But in this case, he's going to go for a one-gate expansion of his own. Looks like these two are completely happy to simply sit on their opposing sides of the map, mining, mining, mining. And uh, there you go, White Rod's probe is a bit of a gold digger once again. Looks like it's actually got a, this weird nose on it. Yeah. You ever noticed that? It, the probe's running around with his big blue noses trying to poke SCVs with them. Uh. Maybe that's just me. Drug addicts, that's for sure, these probes. And uh, Stalker's about to come accusations out. Accusations there, Apollo. Yeah. Stalker's out, chases the SUV away. We'll still want to poke at the, the kind of ramp and uh, natural area of uh, DD to kind of keep him on one base for as long as possible. And look at that four barracks follow up here, and still no gas. Very, very late gas here. Sort of a bit droopy stylish, this, isn't it, if I recall correctly? He kind of likes to go for this later gas in the four barracks. And then, of course, he can transition into a lot of drop play. And DDE's very comfortable with that as well. So it wouldn't surprise me to see some of that coming in. Well, it's purely Marine otherwise, which will it'll be enough to push away the Stalker for the time being. There's plenty of Marines available, so he can't really scout up that ramp. He doesn't know how many barracks are currently available. He doesn't know anything about the timing of the gas either, which could be problematic. Yeah, it means he has to throw down a robotics facility in a second uh, to kind of get that information for sure. Uh, one stalking got there, and you see a lot of Marines. Whoa, one Ooh. big hit does manage to survive, though, just about. But at the same time, he does not know what this is. This basically to White Rock could be uh, three barracks stim all in. It can be one, one, one. 
Uh, so he needs to throw it out the robotics facility very, very shortly here to kind of identify what's going on. Or he can just blindly counter it, which would be like adding on more gateways right now. Uh, and then just going for five, six gateway push. He could. But I mean, it's not a terrible idea. You, you've got to take into account, once again, the psychology of the best of five in that he's two games up. He could afford to blind counter this. And if he takes a gamble and he skips the robo in order to get more units out and he's able to counter it, he wins. If not, he's still got a game up on him. So he, he doesn't really mind all that much. He must be thinking now with the marine count, however, that, yeah, that was probably gasless. And there must be at least three bags, perhaps four at this stage. Stork is now rolling out to try and deal with these marines. I don't know if there's quite enough. Obviously, Stalkers are quite nice against marines, but that is a lot of pressure coming in right here. Yeah, he just has to keep kiting all the way to the natural, and he'll slowly wear this down. Uh, and DDE realized that as well. He did bring three SUVs to stop building bunkers and so on on the natural, but there's just no way that he can keep up with these stalkers. They'd be able to kite these marines all day long, to be honest, taking minimal losses. Uh, and he retreats to his second game plan, to be honest, which is falling back onto Steam. He's got Tet Labs now added on as well. Uh, and we'll want to throw down that factory very, very shortly. And uh, all these stalkers, look how much damage they're doing. Great micro from yep. where are. Good solid micro. He is losing a stalker every now and again, but for the most part, he is microing around and there you go, completely surrounded and shot oh, down to the last man. That was a horrible little picture there we saw. Five stalkers ganging up on one single marine. It was, it was surrounded, completely and totally surrounded, horrible. then gunned down with no mercy. i got to say, when it comes to White Rod, nicest guy in the world, but my god does he play mercilessly. And now here comes a little bit of pressure onto that bunker line. Will White Rod be able to get in there? I don't think so. The Marauders are now in the mix as well, and those stalkers are pretty badly hurt. Yeah, I mean, he's just going to poke around, blue pressure, force the second bunker, which is going down now as well. Meanwhile, Warp Prism, of course, on its way. Of course. Um, followed by Robotics um, Base, who's going to switch over into Colossus very, very shortly here. Uh, and that's going to be work out well for him because he realizes that was a lot of units there. There were a lot of units there, which means you must have had three, maybe four barracks straight away. There's no factory, there's no medivacs, which means the starport is going to be late, which means Vikings is going to be late. Therefore, switching over to Colossus is great because you always want to get two, four, maybe six medivacs before you switch to Vikings in an ideal world, but that is not going to happen here. We don't even see a factory been put down yet. Yeah, that's a real problem. And there's the scan. Does it see it? It should from that range, I would think. And he has to go right now. He has yeah. to salvage and go because he knows Colossals are on the way and he knows he cannot beat them without Starport. Um, so nope. he has to go now before they come out. And he's going to hit a pretty nice timing because of that scan. Uh, and will White Rock, oh no, do not lose these Stalkers. Oh, White Rock getting caught completely out of position right there. Far too slow in the reactions. And that's three Stalkers sliced apart. And this is DDE's chance right here. The defenses are not strong at all. Yeah, and Stim's about to finish as well, which is going to make this push so much stronger. He might even have to camp just on, on his one base, but that means he'll lose the Nexus. Warp Prison is about to land into the main base of DDE, and SCVs are dying, but he's got to defend this attack on his natural. Yeah, he does, and this Colossus does not have the range of grade, which means that that happens. There's the quick Stim, and White Ra, that Warp Prism is not going to help all that much. Honestly, White Ra has to just hold this. He's got to sacrifice. If he can trade an Expo for an Expo, it'll be okay, but there'll be reinforcements streaming in right here from the main of oh, that so that's not going to happen white right isn't he actually even able to do anything loses the warp prism and that is the nexus isn't dead yet honestly oh the marauders are going to go down just about white Rock will be able to defend the, the, the probes from the up. back a nice little flanking maneuver right there white Rock holds once again masterful performance there mm -hmm. that said Still a lot of pressure coming in. He's got to watch out for that. Needs to get a Colossus up. He actually decided to build an Immortal instead of a second Colossus. And that means that if these guys land again, it's a lot of pressure to come in. But I think White Ra's okay now. And that could have been really scary for a minute. He had a lot of Karana Boost saved up on that Nexus. He's just literally spent 100 more worse of energy on getting pros back out. So if you look at the pro count, he's actually at 48 to 40. Despite Very all nice. that, he did manage to kill about 10 SCVs as well with the Warp Prism drop. So he managed to kind of stay Stabilize. The big up right now for DDE is that because he went for a factory late, he was able to get a third command center, which is obviously going to help his economy kind of bloom even harder than it currently is. But he still hasn't even made any medivacs yet, and he's not even looking to go over into Vikings. Uh, and that means his Colossus is going to climb up and up and up. Yeah, I am concerned about the lack of upgrades, I have to say, for White Rao at the moment. And White Rao's not really been playing an upgrade heavy style at this point. He's only just started that plus one ground armor, sensible maneuver. But at the moment, it's primarily Marauders that are coming out, so the plus one armor is not going to be as effective as you might think. Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of Zealots. He doesn't have Zealot Charge or anything yet for these Zealots. 
Uh, and the second Colossus is on its way. White Rush should really look to push out around three Colossus, to be honest, to try to hit a nice timing before Vikings do climb up too much. But DDE just goes immediately to Vikings. He knows that threat. He throws down the second stopper as well, realizing that he could be in a lot of damage if uh, White Rod decides to push out with a couple of Colossus. The big problem, though, for DDE, because he just doesn't have any medivacs, which means his units are very, very weak. And uh, they do not even have any upgrades yet. But... His economy is nice. Does have a third base up, catching up with SCVs as well. He's got an opportunity because White Rod doesn't want to roll out just yet. He doesn't quite have the critical mass that he wants to create this big ball of doom and roll over DDE. And a sensible idea right here from DDE, which is to attack these destructible rocks. He'll be able to batter his way through with that many Marauders very rapidly. And he could start applying pressure to this third. And a spread out Protoss is a weak Protoss. Indeed it is. But the thing is that he's just going down one area. If he was to drop in the main as well, that would be incredible. But... No medivacs, so he can't. Uh, and now that White Rod is going to come, he may be able to force field these and trap and kill everything here. Yeah, it looks like DDE is not going to let that happen. And a quick stim out of there, nicely played there by DDE. And yes, you're right, it could have been a trap, but White Rod not quite quick enough for indeed DDE, just a little bit too fast. Yeah, stims and runs away. And now the medivac protection is starting to ramp up. We're going two, four, six out in total on its way now. Uh, we'll be able to heal these up. Upgrades, what plus one about to finish for DDE? Uh, which is obviously going to help against this. Plus one armor is just finished now for White Rod. No second upgrade yet. Uh, we'll want to go into that plus two armor very, very shortly here. Uh, Zealot Charge on its way as well. And in comes a double drop now on the left-hand side. And uh, there is no other prone attack, actually. Just this one coming through the middle. There isn't another drop. But we'll have to see how this will be going down. And White Rod doesn't have anything. Oh, look at that. Preemptively moving Stalkers to come and intercept this. Really nice play there from White Rod. Expecting DDE to do that. Yeah, he, see, he sees this force moving forward and he looks, huh, there's only two medivacs in that force. Right, that's interesting. So this looks like he's trying to draw me out of position. The white rod is very cool and calm. Oh, no. Stalker's back again. Well, there's a bit of a mistake, isn't it? And I th never mind then. It looks like he was actually fooled. White rod moving a large force back to deal with this drop. And there's the pressure coming in on the third. And as I just said, a spread out Protoss is a weak Protoss. And the third Nexus is about to go down, which is disastrous right now for uh, White Rot, and that could really bring DD back in this series. That's what he needed. It's what he needed, and DDE, we've said so many times before, is a master of manipulation. We thought White Rot wasn't going to fall for that, but you know what? He did, and he actually pulled those Stalkers away from that drop, and now if this Nexus goes down as well, that's going to be a disaster, but it won't. He's going to be able to hold that without too much of a problem, but he's going to get away no, unless he starts... Oh, no! Bit of missed micro right there, and that is punished hard. I think he was a little bit worried about this force, which is barreling up the center. Oh, he's trying to grab the Medivax. He gets one nice. of the turns. Colossus is there as well to help out against this, but the counterattack once again Again, is going to be coming from White Raw. He knows he's going to lose his units anyway versus Stim. So just does as much damage as possible. Does not have Blink. Two Marauders there as well. Trying to bring everything together. Will DDE have enough to stop the counterattack this Possibly. Time? A few naked Colossus moving in right there. It's enough for DDE to decide, nope, I'm not going to go anywhere near that. And White Raw losing a large number of units. Of course, Stalkers don't exactly provide too much of a buffer against that kind of Marauder firepower. Sensible to go for a heavy Marauder composition right here by DDE. I'm liking that decision a lot. And right now, he also sees that that Marauder has been working on these rocks. So looks like DDE is gearing up to take a fourth. Yeah, very, very shortly, but White Rod decides to pull back and uh, is going to double expand. Love it. We saw Tyler do this uh, yesterday. Uh, he's going to go grab a fourth right now to try to catch back in this game. Doesn't want to throw everything away for one last ditch attack uh, and kind of lose the game because whoever attacks first, the defending player is always going to have a better position, a better advantage. Therefore, White Rod doesn't necessarily want to go in. Uh, the upgrades for DD looking pretty good. 2 0 for this bio army. 2 0, well, in, in terms of armor for White Rod right now. Uh, yep. And the Viking count's getting really high now. Ten Vikings, only three classes there will go down so fast. Yeah, considering how heavy a Marauder Force he's got right there, though, I'd have to say that that plus two attack's probably going to benefit him more than the plus two armor will for White Ra. If you just look at the basic maths behind that. Mm. So it's kind of unfortunate that White Rod didn't go for attack. But Protoss Ground Weapon Level 1 doesn't take all that much time when you've got lots of Chrono Boost available to deal with that. DDE's force is larger than White Rod's at the moment. And he's got a really heavy air force as well. Those Colossus are not going to live all that long. Yeah, this is going to be really difficult for White Rod to hold on. The force fields have to be perfect. 
uh, and the position of these vi uh, the, the zealots at the front as well. He needs to engage in a nice open area as well with the zealot charge and uh, the fourth base. It's gone. Go down. Yeah, there's no real question about that. That's it. That gives White Raw ample opportunity to move into a defensive position to try and hold this. And this is a very narrow pass. There is a lot of possibility for good force field play here. DDE probably doesn't want to go that way. I wouldn't want to directly engage in a narrow pass like that, but it looks like White Raw's going to force the matter. Those force Ugh. fields are um, a definite misstep right there. They do block off the reinforcements coming in there, and that is a good opportunity for him to go for a counter-attack. The Colossus will melt incredibly fast. I'm concerned about the size of that Bioforce, because I don't think White Raw's got, but he needs to deal with it. Yeah, he can kill the Vikings, but he can't kill the rest of the Marauders, which are now smashing their way through the remainder of White Raw's army. Yeah, that was really bad. Uh, I mean, the force fields in that situation are always meant to benefit the Colossus. The Colossus died instantly, and so it actually hurt White Rod those force fields, because yeah. the Zealots couldn't do anything. No. They were going around, dancing, twirling around, and they couldn't get in and attack and surround. Therefore, DDE just far superior engagement and position. Uh, and manages to clean up that army. And the White Raw's left with two Colossus and uh, not quite a little, enough. little pinch of Zealots, which is not going to be enough to deal with this army. No, no. There is, it's currently a five star port battle cruiser transition coming in from DDE. And I have a feeling that's not actually going to happen because yeah. this game will probably be over before that happens. Bit of a crowd pleasing moment, perhaps. GG, ladies and gentlemen. DDE right back in the fight with tenacity 